Welcome to an episode of Orchids in the Dark, somewhat in the dark. My viewfinder is trying to figure out what it is supposed to be focusing on, and if the viewfinder had a sense of smell, it would know what to focus on. This orchid surprises me. I was not expecting this one to be nocturnally fragrant. This is a first, so <laughs> without further ado, let me know if you knew that Banda Denisoniana is fragrant at night. It is way past midnight while I'm filming this and I have this powder sugar citrusy fragrance permeating the air. I walk around my collection one more time at night to make sure that I've got everything covered up that doesn't need to be blasted by the sun and I make sure that the orchids that need some attention are out of the line of fire also to protect them from the bright morning sun. What I haven't ever noticed is that my Vanda Denisoniana is fragrant at night. During the day I get it. Early morning she's fragrant up until about noon and then she sort of takes a rest during the hottest part of the day and starting 5 p.m. 6 p.m. she starts to really get a move on again. But what I've never ever noticed is that she is potently fragrant way past midnight as well. When I say powdered sugar with a citrus hint in it, there's also a bit of a soapy note to all of that. It is not unpleasant. On the contrary, it is very, very pleasant. And what a surprise. And not only that, the blooms are showing up beautifully with the flash on them. Just a little bit different though. The petals and sepals, the margins around the edges are a little bit more on the dirty yellow side, whereas during the day they are very light, light yellow, almost a a very pale baby chartreuse green. So they're not exactly true to what I can see with the naked eye. The camera is picking up the yellows. What I see is just very light baby pale chartreuse green around the petals and sepals and that includes the lips. So everything you see there sort of off yellow, that is actually green. But my goodness, how can we get into that lip? During the day I cannot see or even appreciate just how orange that throat is getting right in there into the depths of it, usually because of the bright light that permeates this orchid all day long. So it washes out the intensity of that color in the throat. Gorgeous. If you're recognizing some sparkles, that is happy sap. These blooms do not have the pixie dust chrysaline kind of characteristic about them. They are more waxy. So anything that you see glistening, a little bit shiny, that is just happy sap because that is what this orchid just oozes. <laughs> Lots of it. Luckily, the ants have not found my Denisoniana. And even if they do, I really don't care as long as I get to enjoy my blooms together with them and they don't ruin it for me. But wow, I'm impressed. I love her. I've learned something new about her. Vanda Denisoniana is fragrant way and late into the night. Who knew? I didn't. Now I do. I think you're going to be surprised at what you're going to see in the viewfinder. I am shooketh <laughs> with glee. Look at this. Look at that. This is Tolumnia pomegranate. There's two spikes on one side and one spike on the other. I'm going to keep the viewfinder on these two spikes because look at these little bloom clusters in the dark. Oh my goodness, aren't they just adorable? Aren't they just a thing of cuteness? <laughs> I love them. Oh, you just want to hug them and cuddle them and squeeze their chubby little lip there. You know, little cheeks like and shake it. Oh, so, so cute. I am so glad these didn't get washed out. You can really see the velvet texture of the lip and there's all the little sparkles and everything. What you can't really see is that the back of these blooms, there's a hint of green that doesn't actually pick up on the camera. But my goodness, I am being picky here now by trying to tell you what the bloom looks like. The whole thing speaks for itself. Even the yellow little protruding things there. I know there's a technical name for it. My brain just went poof when I saw this in the viewfinder. So forgive me for losing all train of thought. And all the fancy names are out the window. The most fitting description of these blooms is cute, adorable, charming, beautiful, huggable. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Tolumnia pomegranate does not disappoint. Gosh, the detail is incredible. And I have a somewhat clear and still night, which is amazing because trying to keep these blooms in focus, <laughs> if the wind is blowing, well, <laughs> I might have to do a bloom dedication and just use this clip because who knows what the next days will bring. And I really want to dedicate these blooms because wow, blown away. Oh dear, maybe I shouldn't say that because I might just jinx it. <laughs> blown away. I have been for the last four or five days, like literally off my feet. Not a good thing. So we won't jinx it. We won't do the Beetlejuice thing. It is a calm, still night. We're going to take advantage of it. And you can still see how those spikes are bopping around. But isn't this gorgeous? I am so, so glad that I could film this at night. I was very, very worried I'm going to miss out on some blooms because the conditions were just appalling but not for these guys Tolumnia pomegranate you've done me proud girl you've done me proud you know fist pump Boop. <laughs> I love it when you see this <laughs> okay put your drink down whatever you're doing just put your drink down okay because <laughs> trust me I'm glad I'm not holding on to anything or not slurping on anything right now my gosh my gosh, <laughs> this is Dendrobium seraula of all orchids that I always have difficulty filming. Of all orchids, I have never ever come to the conclusion that this one would just come out and light up the viewfinder under the flash. This is insanely beautiful. Now, I do have to apologize if you see any kind of washed out lips as if it was a watercolor painting. That is because I have to water this orchid. I have to water it profusely because it is a very, very thirsty orchid based on the fact that it is just blooming its flip-flops off. <laughs> but I have to water it. And these blooms are so delicate, not to the touch, but it seems like any kind of markings that they have on their lip, it just sort of has been just lightly painted on with the most delicate of paint brushes with watercolor. So put a drop of water on the fresh bloom and it just washes out a little bit. So I'm apologizing for not being able to show you pristine blooms as I try to look for it with the b-roll footage. I'm just not finding it, but eventually I will hold the camera still and I think that is the money shot then because you can see all the different pink hues. You can see the different shades in the petals and sepals. And you can see the pixie dust that I see during the day. Now, she photographs beautifully during the day as well, no doubt. But at night, the bright pink comes out much, much more than her somewhat subdued pink that is more predominant during the day. Seraula, Dendrobium seraula, clearly she's not blue. But, you know, she has a bluish lavender hue during the day. But, oh, I love seeing this bright pink undertone light up with the flash. Beautiful. So, now you can have a sip of your drink again. <laughs> that is, of course, if you are as impressed about what you saw here when the flash went on as I was. You know how the saying goes? you take a double take. <laughs> I had to. I had to take a double take because my hand was like, yikes gorgeous. And I hope that you are enjoying whatever you're sipping on. <laughs> Aren't you glad I warned you? <laughs> well, if those white columns aren't a dead giveaway, I don't know what is. So here is Catlia Siamese doll kiwi. This is interesting. I was looking forward to filming this one at night because of her waxy textures on the petals and sepals. Very, very sturdy structure blooms, very stiff. And you can see that in the reflection of the blooms with the flash on. It's like they are fake, but I'm glad to see that the blooms don't fade out. In actual fact, the colors come through true. The lip is a little bit more on the royal, dark, fuchsia side. I'm royal, not really the right adjective, but it's deeper, darker, and richer. The color under the flash is 
stunning and remarkable. There's nothing to say other than that. But if you can just take that hue and go a little bit darker, then you have the exact same color. Goodness me, we also woke up some ants. I can see them not only on the bloom, but <laughs> around the rim of the pot. So I'm going to have to be doing some checking with this one in the morning. Maybe we have ourselves a colony because she is highly fragrant during the day. Me coming in with a flash. Hmm. We woke up some ants and I bet they're not well pleased. I don't care. I'm pleased. I don't know what you think, but this is beautiful. Now the petals and sepals in the flash look very, very yellow with the blotches of burgundy, but they're more on the green chartreuse yellow side. This is a little bit more to the warm side of yellow, hinting towards orange, just a tad little bit greener, but the camera chooses to pick up the warmer colors of that spectrum. It's not exactly as yellow as we see here tonight. It's beautiful nonetheless, and not complaining. Catlia Zyme is doll kiwi, holding her own, even under the flash. Ooh-wee, I am excited about this one. I am very excited about this one, and I hope you can agree with me. <laughs> Do we have another chef's kiss here? <laughs> I think we do. Mwah. Love it. Love it so much. This is Lelia Pacavia. First time to bloom on both leads for me. She was a first time bloomer in 2021. Now her second lead has also matured and I can't, I just cannot. <laughs> <sighs> Yes, well, here we are. So velvety in the lip. And then you have a silky satin sheen across the petals and sepals that make the texture look so delicate as if it's just going to fail in the wind. But goodness me, I cannot believe how great this display is. Even the fact that the first lead to bloom for me is higher up and the second lead to bloom is a little bit lower down. I am also, while I'm filming the B-roll footage, looking for certain imperfections because I'm not quite sure about how this orchid has some spottings that normally shouldn't be in a bloom, seeing as there was no pest interference while the buds were developing. I'm still seeing something a little bit sus, but you know what? The blemish that I see on one of the blooms happens to be a first time blooming on one of the leads. And that was a similar blemish that I had to the first time blooming of the lead last year. But the blooms that have bloomed out on the lead that is blooming for the second time, <laughs> bear with me here, <laughs> that lead, those blooms are perfect. So I'm not going to question this orchid anymore. We have some first time blooming woes based on what lead is blooming. But overall, I'm just being picky because I don't want to seem ignorant to the fact that, you know, there are certain little things you shouldn't be there. But look at this. There, that, that's just me nitpicking. It's gorgeous and beautiful. Haven't got a fragrance from her yet. She was just opening her first two blooms a couple of days ago, and her second two blooms opened only just today. So we'll see how she develops in her fragrance, if my memory serves me well. Last year, they were somewhat floral, delicious, elegant, and gorgeous. Not just the bloom shape is in proportion, but the fragrance that comes with it also matches what we see. All the senses here are just being triggered in a most positive and delightful way. Love, love, love. I have high hopes for this orchid in the dark. <laughs> Thinking back to Pinkton Bronze Age and the Fias, this one has bronzy kind of <laughs> colors in the blooms. Oh, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So I positioned the camera a little bit further away than, you know, what the orchid could tolerate simply because the blooms that are closest to us are a little bit more washed out and the blooms that are further away from us, well, you can see the true orangey, bronzy kind of colors of the petals and sepals, but she doesn't disappoint. And 
as I try to get in and get some close-ups, I'm trying to pick up on the sparkles that the petals and sepals have. It's not a sparkle that is in your face even during the day, so you got to be aware that that is actually a characteristic of this bloom to be able to recognize it, but it is there and it just increases the beauty of these blooms with those reflections that turn sort of into bronze. By the way, this is Catlia Zip. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't disappoint at all. Even if the sparkles aren't getting picked up all the time, the way the angle of the camera moves around with a flash, the petals and sepals reflect a sort of a satiny kind of texture. Absolutely gorgeous. And clearly the ants are still out and about. As long as there's no mealybugs, that's always one of my little trepidations. When I'm filming at night, I never know what little creatures might be lurking or might have found their way onto the blooms <laughs> in the meantime. But no, these look amazing. Oh gosh, she is beautiful. She's even prettier when there is absolutely no wind. <laughs> this makes me very, very happy. Catlia Zip does not disappoint with flash on her. Definitely not. Oh boy. <laughs> I cheated. I cheated. Now, if you don't see what I see straight off the bat, I've had time to look and think about this. I will talk you through it because last but not least for this episode is Dendrobium Victoria Regina. And at first glance, you would think, yeah, no, she's being washed out. But wait, just wait. Let's check out the B-roll footage. If you don't know, haven't been to my channel before, I have three different types of Dendrobium Victoria Regina here. I have one that's a little bit paler, got more white. I have one that is a little bit darker, has a little bit white, but has beautiful little pointy white bits at the end that are more pronounced. And I have a third one that is the deepest and most saturated of the purple blue color that we all love of Victoria Regina. So what you see as we go through the different blooms that are open is the reflection of this beautiful satin texture that this bloom has and it is not evident during the day. At least I haven't picked up on it. I have never seen how this bloom changes like a hologram effect with the petals and sepals and how it just enhances the purple bluish hues depending on how the flash tilts and moves around. So the lighter one of course was a little bit more reflective and had a little bit more of a sheen to it. The more we get to the saturated blooms, the ones that I find my favorite of all the varieties I've got going on here, it just takes my breath away. A hologram effect of this magnitude on a bloom at night that really isn't blue, but oh my goodness, this is so beautiful and I have one tucked in the back that's probably the third variety. One of the petals didn't quite open but the sheen is just as beautiful and just as elegant. However, however, my eye has just caught the deep rich saturated blooms and I just can't help myself going back and forth with the flash playing with that hologram effect just out of this world out of this world beautiful. Even as I stand looking at the viewfinder, going to the bloom with my naked eye, just looking at it while I'm talking to you, it's beyond, beyond stunning. The lip even of the darkest blooms. I really hope that the b-roll footage is showing you what I'm seeing. Goodness me. And if not, let me know in the comments or go back and check it out after what I've told you and see if you see what I see. Oh, she is stunning. No other way to say it. Anyway, with the queen of dendrobiums, Victoria Regina, her majesty, <laughs> we are going to call it a night and I'm going to say I hope that you enjoyed this edition of Orchids in the Dark and if this midnight snack was satisfactory, also let me know in the comments if it hit that spot before bedtime. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though that you please stay safe and take care. Bye.